Welcome to Responsive Personal Portfolio, Adding Page Website, Experience Section. While our website looks sexy so far but now we need to add our experience and education to our portfolio. Our responsive buttons are working as expected after changing the buttons in the previous video. In the first demo of this playlist, this looks very boring and plain, but I was in a mood to make it look more colorful and pretty. So I changed the cards to have some hover animation similar to the buttons. Also icons to have scaling animation on hover, but that's just basic. Perks of making things fun in coding video. You gotta add it a longer video than expected for YouTube. So let's go coding. Well, we will use font awesome icons today we have an icon class that we created earlier in CSS that we will also utilize for our icons for experience and education. Now let's start up our web page in VS Code. By the way, let's get this please subscribe to my channel over with. It makes my mom smile when she sees new subscribers. So please subscribe. Now it's time for us to write some HTML now. Experience should just have languages you are experienced in and education summarizing your educational background. This whole experience section will showcase my professional journey with interactive tabs for experience and education. Each timeline item will be highlighting roles and achievements with icons, dates, and descriptions. Decorative shapes at visual interest and the section uses modern design elements for an engaging presentation. And with this code explanation, you guys just got a typical AI explanation of the HTML code we are writing. I mean it could have been a longer explanation, but that just seems too robotic for my taste. We are using the same primary buttons we created in one of our previous videos so please check that out from the link in the description. Here comes our beloved route class with the container containing experience content that will be visible initially until the button is pressed to switch to education content. Notice how I used DXP similar to the data target attribute. Well, we will use the same class name for JavaScript to link each button to each part. So, when we click any button, it takes us to the related education or experience content. We will have three timeline items in each part containing what we did, time it took and some text regarding it. Good thing is for once I remember, I have a text file here to copy paste icons from so I don't need to type them out like a stupid idiot. When it comes to dates, we are gonna act luxurious and make it italic font. This video also took its time getting to you guys, but then again personal troubles don't come to people at the right time but rather at the worst time you can ask for, so I apologize for the delay. You guys deserve better than me. We are going to write a sentence about our experience while making sure it doesn't take too much space, which is why we use lorem ipsum text only till the end of the first line. Now we copy paste timeline item class to more times, but first let's make sure the dates are correct. By the way, I have kept the dates according to when this portfolio was first created so make a guess if you want. How did you guys got interested in the field you are in now? For me it was desktop application for final year project that I made with Python that made me realize web development is for me. Well I guess this concludes our experience part so let's head to the education paw. And for that we will copy paste txp container class. This time we put data target value education to connect this part to the other button. We have a separate education icon that we are going to add from the text file we have. Again I am proud of remembering about the text file but anyways. Alright, time to make changes to the copy pasted experience part to make it into education part. You guys are supposed to write something else besides masters in computer science but since I am too lazy, let's just copy paste it on the rest of them. Let's see if the web page has everything we require. I think we are done with HTML. Let me just confirm it. Now it's time to put some makeup on this section with CSS. 
First of all, let's see all the classes and root variables that we already created in the previous videos but are using in today's video as well. In my YouTube experience, I never like to go to the other videos just to see the reusable classes created in the previous video of the playlist. So I won't do the same thing to you guys and display the previously made classes in the current video each time. That being said, if you still miss some code, do let me know in the comments, I will fix it. Time to start writing CSS now for the experience and education section. Tabs classes for buttons container and it defines padding, flex properties, max width, text alignment, and gap between child elements. Question, would you rather have a car landing page website or travel website video? Tell me in the comments what you guys want to see next. Tap item sets display to inline block and adds transition effects to the buttons itself. If the button is active meaning displaying related content of the button then it changes text color of the button to white with 70% opacity. Now that we are done with buttons, let's set up the content itself. Tab content defines flex properties, max width, and hides the element by default. As for active tab content is concerned it displays the element as a block and applies a fade in top animation. My dumb self was trying to see if the animation works after clicking the button even though we have yet to write JavaScript, let's ignore that stupidity. Keyframes fade in top creates an animation that fades in and moves the element from minus 50% translity to zero. This animation will simply display content in a fade into view animation using translation. Time to grab the container for each of the tab content to ensure the content doesn't spread with increased width and to make it easily responsive with setting maximum width to 1000 pixels and centering the container in the web page. Timeline defines flex properties, max width, and relative positioning, while timeline before creates a vertical line as a pseudo element with specific dimensions and background color. This will act as the pillar holding the cards for experience and education left and right. Let's see how that one pixel width pillar looks like. It definitely needs some gin time. Timeline item are actually the cards that displays information about our education and experience. We have three for each part. We are also going to add a similar hover animation inspired by buttons on these cards. In CSS, the MTH child out and MTH child even pseudo classes select elements with a or even positions within their parent elements child list. In our case, opposition timeline item elements will have more left padding, less right padding, and left aligned text, while even position elements will only have more left padding. Timeline item inner defines padding, border radius, relative positioning, and box shadow for the actual card content. Fun fact, I already have my reusable codes in the description so you can simply take it from there. Now things are starting to look up finally. Timeline item inner before pseudo class creates a small horizontal line position within the timeline item inner element, often used to visually connect items in the timeline. By the way, I created a YouTube short on preloader, which you guys should check out, but also tell me if you guys want me to create a preloader for this website as well. It could be the one in the short or a completely different one or none at all. Do let me know. The after pseudo class creates a full-size pseudo element behind timeline item inner that scales and hover, with the transform origin adjusted for odd and even parents to determine the scaling direction. In another words, it is the initial state before the cool hover effect similar to the buttons. I am starting to get bored with this blue color, I should probably complete this portfolio fast. Next video is gonna be fun with infinite swiper JS slider for testimonies, so stay tuned for that. Also I have to say the most important thing in the world free Palestine, don't like my stance then leave. Now we gotta position the pseudo element before 30 pixels to the left for odd children. You guys guessed right, we gonna play the left right game for odd and even content. Similarly, we will position the pseudo element before 30 pixels to the left for even children. While adding voiceover to this video I just realized that I accidentally deleted the entire border radius right in front of you guys, rather than auto prefixes, to get more code to display on screen. I guess we will realize our mistake later in the video and correct it. 
Now it's time for some hover effects, where on odd content will scale the pseudo element to one on the X axis and changes the origin to the right on hover. As for even content, we scale the pseudo element to one on the X axis and changes the origin to the left on hover. I love the fact that it's working. The feeling when your co is working is very special and I know only you guys understand that feeling even if it's a tiny code to write hello world for the first time. Now we don't see the icon so we deal with icon by defining absolute positioning, background color, line height, border radius, and border for the icon. Oh look the icon looks as pretty above the cart as the intricate designs on my trash can. I always wonder why would someone carve such beautiful art of flowers and everything on the trash can or is it just my own trash can? Anyway, we are adding a hover effect on icon as well because we love fashion and styling everything by scaling the icon to 1.1 with transition effects on hover. And we are back to handling the position of icons that looks like trash right now on both even and dot cards. By positioning the icon 60 pixels to the left for both even and dot cards. Well it looks nice enough to start styling the text within these cards. Starting with the date class that displays the date as a block with specific margin, font weight, and font style. I don't know why but italic font style make things look luxurious so that's why I like to keep dates in the projects italic. Well now all that's left is simply setting line height and margin for the text. I see some trouble in paradise for the border radius that we accidentally deleted. Let's add this border radius and see if everything looks good enough to go for media queries for a responsive layout. Let's figure out the things we have to make responsive. Well the train blocks parted ways with the rest of the train and now we have each timeline item leaving the station as the width of the screen increases. That's the kind of example only my brain can come up with and understand it. To rectify this mess, we are pushing content left with padding right, aligns text right, and also at left padding. For even, we had left padding that is 50% of the containers width plus 50 pixels, pushing the content to the right and align the text to the left. For a large screen size, we have to position the vertical line in the middle of the timeline container. This also means that the icons will have to be set accordingly. For odd, we are resetting any left positioning, while positioning the icon 70 pixels to the left of the right edge of the timeline item. As for even, we are positioning the icon 70 pixels to the left of the timeline item. The icons are attached to the timeline item so, we are playing the left and right game to get them to center. Time for timeline inner setting where the pseudo element before in odd timeline item inner elements is positioned to the left of the right edge. Now let's see what we have done so far and what more needs to be done. On large screen, it's creating a lot of space between buttons so we need to establish a max width for the button container. When the viewport is at least 479 pixels wide, the tabs element will have a maximum width of 500 pixels, preventing it from becoming wider than this limit. Ignoring the odd ones, looking odd, I am not liking the button's width here. So let's fix it by changing the padding of our button since portfolio section buttons also don't satisfy me in terms of width. They look a little small and I need a fat one. When it comes to buttons, their length always annoy me. Not because they are not responsive enough or not working well but because I like too much precision with button's length and content that button is in. It's just a me thing but you guys can keep the previous width of the buttons. Oh that was satisfying. I love the width of the buttons and now this should be the last changes for the buttons. Now that buttons are fixed let's deal with the timeline items again because for some reason we have made some mistake with the odd timeline items, which is making a mess. You see now the odd ones are going to the left side, while even ones on the right side of the line. Time for some JavaScript to get both education and experience sections on click of the button. To give you guys the short rundown of what's going on in JavaScript, this JavaScript code listens for the event and then sets up a click event listener on a tabs element to manage tab switching functionality. 
while adding an event listener to the tabs class and ensuring when a tab is clicked, it checks if it's not already active, then deactivates the current active tab band content and activates the click tab band its corresponding content. This if right there ensures the clicked element is a tab button man is not already active. Not to be a sap, but I really get emotional when things are working out, so let's hope I don't make a mistake in JavaScript, which is basically the language that I am a bit clumsy in with my most stupid mistakes like dot and call. I hope you guys can see the code better now that the code screen is large. Now we find the currently active tab band content elements. This JavaScript code is small, but you can always apply this to switch between classes and handle different conditions and scenarios. This target content finds the content element that corresponds to the click tab using the data target attribute of the click tab. Now it's time, we switch active classes by adding and removing classes. In the four lines I'm writing right now, we are removing the active class from the currently active tab and content. While we are also adding the active class to the click tab band its corresponding content. I was just seeing a video of UX designer saying, we are always underpaid unless we have five years of experience. Do you think it's true? Anyways, let's see the monster we created. JavaScript for these buttons is working fine but the animation for displaying each tab content is a bit sketchy. Translation looks a bit wild to me, but if you are satisfied with minus 50% then don't change it. Now it's time to test if everything is working perfectly while seeing a non-sped up version of the outcome of our code. Look at all the cool hover animation effect we have on all timeline items. Also the icon hover effect of scaling. And don't get me started on the button animation and timeline item display animation with translation. If you haven't guessed already, I have nothing more to say so I am gonna keep praising this boring demo proudly. It's time to see our work on different screen sizes to ensure responsive layout. Look how pretty it looks, even the buttons look like they are taking nice good amount of space not too small to the point that both buttons are occupying the same line on mobile screen. We have also managed to achieve separate layouts for different screen sizes where the line and icons are on the left with timeline items on right for mobile screen and for larger screen the line and icons are in the center with timeline items on either sides. Let's see the tablet screen size where the timeline items look a bit smaller than large screen size because it's responsive and accommodating the size of itself according to the screen width. Did you guys notice the text in the timeline item inner that is intentionally aligned on left for even and right for odd timeline item? Also the day, we have put in italic a chef's kiss. Everything looks nice on the tablet screen size so let's see our own laptop screen now. I love the padding and spacing between elements here, like beautiful really. I think I have rambled enough already so I will shut up now and give you guys some well-deserved peace for sticking with me this long. Well this seems to be working perfectly for me so, if you have been dealing with my dead humor for 20 minutes straight then, 